I got her pregnant, so fill out the divorce paper and get out quickly. You're just a mere housekeeper. I'll pay you compensation, so disappear. I was betrayed by my best friend and my husband on my birthday. But it's so pitiful that they don't know anything. I hope both my deceitful best friend and my husband, who treated me like a convenient housekeeper, suffer together. Good morning, breakfast is ready. Oh! Laban, my husband, gave a short reply and sat at the dining table. I continue to walk around, preparing for my husband's departure for work this morning. I'm Jane, 25 years old, and I work from home. I used to work for a big company right after graduating, but I quit two years ago when I married Laban, who was also my colleague. I'm off. Take care. I washed the breakfast dishes for my husband and then started working myself. Working from home inevitably pays less than when I had a job at a company, but recently things have finally started to fall into place. Laban is resourceful and well-liked by clients, and he was one of the rising stars among our peers. He confessed his feelings to me, and we started dating, eventually getting married after a year. Colleagues led by our boss, Marcus, tried to persuade me. Are you really going to quit? However, driven by Laban's strong desire, I made the decision to leave the company. From now on, I'll support you financially. Although Laban assured me the truth was that I still needed money, and starting remote work was a good fit for someone like me who enjoyed working. I spent my days juggling work and household chores, eagerly waiting for my husband to come home. I have been doing this for a few more years now. In general, it may seem like an ordinary life. However, I never imagined that it would all be shattered by a single phone call. Jane, you did a great job on this project as well and there's hardly any need for revisions. Thank you for always providing meticulous manuscripts. No, no, I'm the one who should be thanking you for the support. After finishing the online exchange, I took a moment to relax. The remote work I do primarily involves writing. At first, writing internet articles was challenging, but once I grasped the tricks, it became easier. Now I have confidence in delivering work of considerable quality. Phew! I think I'll call it a day here. The advantage of remote work is being able to determine the workload by oneself. Today is an important day. I decided to finish work earlier than usual and prepare a meal. Yes, today is my birthday. I briefly considered going out to eat somewhere special, but I didn't want to spend too extravagantly, so I decided to celebrate modestly at home. A slightly more luxurious meal than usual and a cake bought from the local bakery. My husband has a company dinner tonight as well. He won't be back until after 9 o'clock, so I plan to relax until then. Oh, just when I was thinking that, my phone vibrated. Huh? Karen? Upon seeing that name, my eyes widened involuntarily. It was a message from Karen, who used to be my colleague. Karen Laban and I were in the same department and joined the company at the same time. Because of that, the three of us were close, and when I was still working at the company, we often went out for drinks after work together. Both of them were lively, although there were times when I couldn't keep up with their energy. However, I considered them both as friends. Karen made many mistakes at work, but as we covered up for each other, we developed a close bond. Although there were some challenging aspects, I couldn't help but find her likable in a one way or another. I think I might have been Karen's closest companion as well. However, after I left the company, our communication gradually decreased and eventually ceased altogether. Well, that's just how relationships with people are. Especially when it comes to friendships in adulthood. They often don't last long. Having realized this, I felt lonely but didn't force myself to cling on to her. Karen knows it's my birthday. I wonder if she reached out to surprise me and celebrate. Thinking that, I felt delighted and reached for the call button. Hello? Karen? What's up? Oh, hello. Hearing Karen's voice after a long time felt nostalgic. Listening to her voice reminded me of the time when we used to work together. Although the desire to return to those days had faded, there was still a sense of nostalgia. Jane, it's your birthday today, right? 
That's why I contacted you as a surprise. <laughs> I thought so. I smiled instinctively as my prediction came true. However, at that moment, I didn't realize the sinister smile that Karen had on her face over this phone. The words she uttered next almost made me drop my smartphone. I'm with Laban right now. Huh? Laban was with her. Of course, since both of them worked at the same company, it was natural for such a situation to arise. However, I couldn't understand why she would go out of her way to tell me this over the phone. What do you mean? Is something wrong with Laban? Laban is doing fine. Then why would you say something like that? As I asked, Karen's voice seemed to carry a hint of triumph. I meant exactly what I said. You're at a drinking party, right? If he's drunk, I can come pick him up. It's not a drinking party. It wasn't a drinking party. I became even more puzzled by those words. And with Karen's following statement, tension surged within me. We're at a hotel, just the two of us. A man and a woman alone in a hotel. Upon hearing that, there was only one possible scenario that came to mind, and I clenched my trembling hand around the smartphone. Are you saying that he has been cheating all along? Cheating? First of all, Laban has no interest in you. Karen spoke coldly. Laban and I have been deeply in love with each other for a long time. Those words made everything in front of me go dark. Karen was someone who could be considered a friend or even a best friend to me. Even though our friendship had faded, my feelings towards her remained the same. And now I learned that the person I considered as a close friend and my husband were having an affair. Is it true? Oh yes, of course, and there's another surprise for you. Given the flow of the conversation, there was no way the surprise would be something good. Karen spoke with a tone that made it clear she was mocking me. I'm pregnant this time. Will you fill out the divorce papers? Pregnant? Laban and I had never discussed having a child together. It's surprising how easily he ended up having a child with his affair partner. So you've been betraying me all along. I finally managed to say it. Karen laughed and replied, Betrayal? Weren't you just a convenient woman for him? I had no idea that Karen thought of me in such a way. I had always believed that Karen also considered me as a friend. I stumbled and placed my hand on the table. The meal I had just prepared was already starting to cool. And Laban, you said he's there with you, right? Yes, would you like to talk to him? As soon as she said that, I heard rustling sounds on the other end of the phone, and the voice I heard this time was undoubtedly that of my own husband. Jane, happy birthday. It was the same words he said to me last night, but Laban's tone of voice was much colder this time. Laban, what does all this mean? Are you saying that you've been having an affair with Karen? Obviously, that's what it means. You can't even grasp the situation. You really are clueless. The reason Laban was attracted to me was apparently because of how I performed when we worked together as a team. I've always been attentive to details, and I've applied that in my work. Jane, you're really quick to grasp the situation, and I appreciate your attention to detail. During a celebration party for our successful teamwork, I happened to be sitting next to Laban, who approached me and said those words. I was delighted. That's not true. It's because of your bold thinking and creativity that we succeeded. Laban was the opposite of me. He was someone who looked at the big picture rather than focusing on the details. That's why there were times when we clashed in our team. However, I believe that it was thanks to those clashes that our work was successful. We were already close friends from the beginning, but since that day we started to have a certain awareness of each other. Eventually, Laban confessed his feelings to me, and that led to our marriage. If you wait for me, Jane, at home, I can give it a my all. Laban said that to me earnestly when I hesitated to quit my job. But it turns out that all those words were lies. 
Laban lets out a heavy sigh and says, Honestly, I never saw you as anything more than a housekeeper. You have no appeal, and I can't see you as a woman like Karen. I thought this was a good opportunity since she's pregnant. I'll pay you alimony, so don't worry. I do believe Karen was undeniable appeal as a woman. Even male colleagues at work would give her flirty looks, and Karen herself would boast about it. Laban continued further. I couldn't stand seeing your face every day. I feel relieved now. I was shocked to hear that Laban has such thoughts and to be directly told that. Meanwhile, it seems that the phone has returned to Karen's hands. She appears lively and is belittling me again. That's why I'm asking you to get a quick divorce, okay? However, after taking a deep breath, I asked as a final confirmation. Is that okay? Huh? Of course it's okay, isn't it? Karen seemed surprised by my unexpected response. I continued to speak to her. I'm renting this place, so I'll send your stuff there. Can you give me your address? Uh, okay, okay. Karen said it in a bewildered manner. Did she think I was making excuses for losing? Though truth of her assumption remains uncertain, I said. Well, I'll hang up then. And with that, I quickly end the call. And I looked down at the completely cold dinner, feeling completely detached from it. This wouldn't taste good unless reheated. By general standards, this would be the moment for me to shed tears. Betrayed by both my best friend and husband on my birthday of all days. However, I didn't shed any tears. Instead, I muttered under my breath. I hope both of them become miserable. Yes, I know that both of their lives won't go well. It happened about a year ago. I received a call from Marcus, my former boss at the company. Marcus was a person of great integrity and generosity, someone I would turn to when I was in trouble. He had taken care of me since I was a rookie. Even when I left the company, he expressed deep regret. With nervousness, I answered the call from him. It's been a while. Is there something you wanted to talk about? Upon hearing that, Marcus replied in a serious tone. Well, I want to meet and talk to you about something, he said. Since I have a job with flexible hours, I arranged a meeting day that suited Marcus's schedule. It's been a while, Jane. Yes, it has. So what brings you here today? We met at a quiet cafe. We ordered drinks for now, and I asked him. Marcus let out a sigh in response. He seemed deeply troubled by something. Actually, it's about Laban. Something about my husband? Could it be that he did something wrong at work? Laban seemed normal as usual, but I started to feel anxious. However, Marcus shook his head and said, It's not about something at work. And then with determination he spoke. Actually, the other day I saw Laban entering a hotel with another woman in the downtown area. And at company gatherings, he has been saying negative things about you. What? What? I was shocked by Marcus's words. Laban had been attending more company gatherings during this time, and he would often come home late. However, he never showed any hint of such behavior. But Marcus was not the kind of person to make up such lies. I knew that he was opening up to me like this because he cared about me. Still, there was a part of me that didn't want to believe it. Thank you for your advice. However, I still find it hard to believe. That's understandable. I just thought it would be better to let you know before you get hurt any further. It might be worth being a little more observant of his actions. Gratefully accepting Marcus's advice, we parted ways that way. And since then, I tried to gather evidence of Laban's infidelity. To my surprise, I, it kept pouring out. Knowing how to unlock his smartphone, I would sneak a peek while Laban was asleep. There, I discovered exchanges of messages with various women. I captured all of it in photos. Afterward, I began to track Laban's movements on weekends. As a result, I witnessed him entering hotels with women multiple times. Working on weekends is so tiresome. He would often complain about it, but that was mostly a lie. In reality, he was engaged in his affairs. Of course, I captured that too in photos. 
Thanks to that, I now had dozens of pieces of evidence in the form of photos and videos, which would undoubtedly ensure my victory in court. Finding out that Laban was cheating was honestly heartbreaking and infuriating, but more than anything, I felt a strong sense of disbelief. If he had only cheated with one woman, I might have thought he was just being fickle. But with his indiscriminate actions, it seemed like his brain was controlled solely by his lower desires. At that point, my feelings for him had completely cooled off. Laban had always left all the household chores to me, demanding perfection, while he attended countless drinking parties. So, it was not surprising that thoughts of divorce crossed my mind. I was shocked by the surprise from Karen because I never expected her to be involved with Laban. Laban's direct insults were, of course, hurtful. But once everything had surpassed a certain threshold, I began to think that the timing was actually quite good. It seemed like a great opportunity to declutter my life from these two individuals who were no longer needed. Later on, I sent Laban's belongings and the divorce papers together. And on Karen's birthday, several weeks later, I sent her the evidence photos of Laban's affairs with other women that I had collected. Furthermore, I added a message to the package. I know it must be tough dealing with the debt repayment, but hang in there. Indeed, Laban had a significant amount of debt. Laban had an ambitious and daring personality which led him to get caught up in gambling at one point. I learned about it after we got married and I had been saving money to help repay it since there was no other choice. I believed as a married couple we shared responsibilities and obligations. But as a divorced woman I had no obligation to repay his debt. The money I had saved was in my own account so there was no worry of Laban taking it away. What do you mean? Karen responded immediately. Don't you know, Laban has a massive amount of debt. I have saved some money to help with the repayment, but of course, I have no obligation to assist anymore. Karen, he's your husband after all. Do your best to help him repay the money. And then... I didn't ask for your opinion, okay? I received a message, but why did I even need to hear that? I ignored it and blocked Karen. By the way, I had blocked Laban a long time ago. This truly marks the end of any connection with the two of them. I felt refreshed. By now, Karen must be confronting Laban. The thought of their interaction made me laugh. Months after the divorce, Marcus contacted me again. This time, it was through written communication rather than a meeting in person. It seems Laban and Karen are constantly fighting and living in the worst kind of marriage. It's no wonder. I had sent them all that evidence. There was bound to be animosity. But even so, didn't Karen imagine it? That Laban was not only cheating on me, but also engaging in such activities with other women? No, she probably didn't imagine it. She must have believed she was special, the only one. I heard that Karen is being demoted now. I heard she was originally a candidate for demotion due to her constant mistakes. Perhaps her turbulent marriage further affected her performance. In addition to the delay in repaying the money he wasted on gambling, it seems that Laban's situation is also deteriorating. There have been increasing complaints from business partners as, as well. I heard later that Karen's family used to be wealthy. Knowing Karen, she probably told Laban about her family's affluent background. And Laban, thinking he found a way to repay his debts, cleverly took advantage of it. But now they are living in a modest household. There's no doubt that they have no room to spare for repaying Laban's debt. Moreover, with Karen being demoted, her salary is likely to decrease. The future looks bleak for both of them. Karen has always had a penchant for buying luxury brands and has been living a lifestyle that doesn't match her salary from the beginning. In a way, they might be a well-matched couple. They asked me to give them your contact information, but I declined. Marcus said that, and I expressed my gratitude. I want nothing to do with them ever again. I have no desire to forgive them, or even see them, regardless of how much they try to approach me now. If those two end up in ruin, it's not my concern. As for me, my remote work is going smoothly, and I have enough income to support myself. 
In addition to the savings I had set aside for repaying Laban's debt, I received ample compensation. It's almost laughable how easily Laban agreed to pay the compensation. It was likely meant to come out of Karen's money. Reflecting on it is truly absurd. Laban borrowed money from questionable sources, and the debt appears to be increasing day by day. A man who always relies on others must be feeling quite anxious right now. I have plans for significant projects in the future, and I am confident in living a stable life. My life is just beginning. I intend to make up for the past few years and find happiness.